Is 2022 the year to get out of the real estate market in Austin? Jeremy Nathan Knight Group, your favorite Austin realtor, a lot of sellers are reaching out to me right now and saying that they are getting out of this market for a lot of reasons. So let's look at the reasons why somebody might wanna get out of the real estate market in 2022. And if you're a buyer, pay attention to this because what we're gonna talk about for sellers and the market that's gonna be going on in 2022, you're gonna to wanna to hear as well. And as always, make sure to drop a comment below. I wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts on the market? Do you think it is time to sell in the Austin market and get out? A lot of the things I'm going to talk about in this list are very, very important. And the last one is one you should stick around for. So definitely hang around for the whole video. So first thing we need to talk about is the amount of people still moving to Austin. So if you're thinking about selling, obviously we want to make sure that there is demand there, right? And if we look at this in 2021, more jobs were announced. In fact, 27,000 jobs were announced in 2021. That's a 21% more more than 2020, which was the next highest with about 22,000 jobs. Now we're seeing Amazon move here. We're seeing Tesla still bringing uh, people here. In fact, Tesla is just now going to start uh, producing cars at their plant. And there are so many other companies. In fact, Meta is now leasing up all of the downtown building in Austin, which is one of the largest commercial real estate buildings. So this is all huge news, which just means more and more jobs are coming here. And quick editor's note right here, we actually don't have the full amount of people that moved here in 2021. One. It's actually estimated that about 75-ish thousand people were going to move here. So as those numbers come out, we'll actually find out how many people moved here in 2021 and then really how many people will be moving here total in 2022. Keep in mind, a lot of these jobs aren't even here yet. Tesla's not here, not fully here, and some of these other jobs aren't even here. Yes, they've announced these jobs, but these people aren't even here, so that will have an impact on the market. Well, the problem with that is right now, we are at the lowest inventory. So inventory is the next thing for us really to look at. So we know we have more jobs coming here. We know we have more people moving here, but inventory right now in the market in Austin in January, we're at about 24 400 units, which is nothing. Because let's look at that, about 800 units of this 2100 are new construction that aren't even really available to purchase until later this year. As I scroll through the MLS, I'm looking at a lot of these and yeah, they are not available. And one thing that we're seeing with builders this year is we are gonna see a lot of issues with builders not being able to produce inventory, which means that buyers are gonna be forced back into this resale market. So the resale market, the first half of this year is going to be pretty, pretty strong. Now, if we compare this to the 2021 market, the beginning of 2021, we did not have a lot of inventory and that caused this crazy panic demand, which I don't think we're going to see the crazy panic demand the same as we did in 2021, but we will see a lot of people buying in the early part of the year. So really this chart right here just shows that the beginning of the year, prices took off like crazy. And then as we got to June, July, prices leveled off and then dropped. So if you are a seller looking at this market, I would highly recommend if you are planning on selling, the beginning of the year, January to June is when you need to list and get your house in the market soon. Now, one tip, if you are putting your house in the market, let the market really drive the price of your home. I know as a seller, you're gonna hear that it's a crazy market and it's a good time to sell, but just keep in mind, if you priced your property too high, it will sit on the market. If you look at the homes that are on the market right now, a lot of them are these Zillow iBuyer program homes, and they're just sitting there. And if you're a buyer, do be prepared for bidding wars the beginning part of this year because of the amount of demand and people moving here. Now, one thing we have to really look at if you are selling or buying is the fact that interest rates are jumping up higher than actually anticipated. So this is something that's gonna impact the market pretty much throughout the year because it will lower the demand of what people can actually pay for and afford. So this will hurt us, especially if we see prices get up into the 4% range, which they're about 3.6. They've dropped back down a little bit out to 3.5% uh, right now, the beginning of January. So this is something that if you are selling, you really don't want to wait for interest rates to get really high and towards the middle of the year because that will limit what people can purchase. So, so far we know that inventory is super low. I mean, it's the lowest I've seen it. We know that interest rates are rising, so that might 
dampen a little bit of things towards the end, middle of the year and to the end of the year. We know that buyer demand is still there. I know there's a website out there or a YouTube channel out there saying that buyer demand is not there. Uh, they are high on their own supply because number one, this market is not going to crash this year and buyer demand is still there. And then on top of that, interest rates are rising. The other thing that we got to worry about is incomes and affordability. If As these prices get really high, as they're getting, Incomes really aren't jumping up. Now, incomes are coming up in Austin, but they're not coming up as fast as anticipated. In fact, if we look at something crazy, this just got announced that they're building a full neighborhood just for rentals. So builders know that buyers are not gonna be able to buy this year at a certain point. So they are already building full neighborhoods in the Austin area just for rentals. So yeah, if you were thinking about buying a rental, I'd probably get in on it quick because a lot of people aren't gonna be able to afford homes really towards the end of the year like they were at the beginning of the year. So we might see rentals in higher demand towards the end of the year. Editor's note here, one thing that we need to also think about when it comes to inventory. I know people think that we are going to see a lot more inventory. For a long time, we've thought that there are going to be more inventory because of foreclosures and things like that due to forbearance. Well, as we've seen in history this last year, that a lot of those people that are on forbearance are moving off of forbearance now and getting out of forbearance, and those foreclosures have been very small. Now, the other thing to think about when it comes to inventory this year, I doubt we'll see as much inventory this year because people are aware that rates are rising, so maybe not as many buyers go out and buy their second home this year. The other thing to think about is a lot of people refied last year. So those refis, like myself, I would rather buy another property versus selling my property because I know I have a lot of equity in that home. I could rent my home out and take that equity that I make every month and put it into the new property. So we will see people buying in the higher price points, the million dollar price points for those reasons. And that really competitive price point where people are going to have a lot of problems is going to be that 500 and under price point. So this brings me to the thing that's very, very important that you have to pay attention to in 2022 that could really hurt sales and hurt a lot of things. And that is property tax increases. Now, you investors, when you purchase an investment, cannot write a homestead. Now, there's some new rules on homestead, but it doesn't really, I know people are saying, oh, this is great. It doesn't really help you. I'm just going to be blunt. It helps you because you can write a homestead for 2021 in the year you purchased, or if you're buying a home right now in 2022, you can homestead now in 2022 instead of having to wait till 2023, or if you purchased in 2021, having to wait till 2022. So that might decrease how much the first tax gets increased, but property taxes are not slowing down and they are not getting lower. And I know you've seen some things with the school district saying they're reducing their tax rates. They're reducing the tax rate slightly, but the value of your home is still going up. Now, my taxes for this year on in 2021 went up about $1,300. That's a lot just for me. And I saw a lot of my neighbors see really high property tax increases. And guess what? With the amount of values that homes gained in 2021, we are going to see massive price increases in your taxes this year. So at a certain point towards the middle of the year, when those property valuations come out, it will start hurting the values of what people were willing to pay for those homes. So if you are getting ready to sell, I would probably sell earlier in the year. And if you're looking to buy, I probably would look to buy earlier in the year as well. Now you can't wait to the later part of the year. Prices, if we look at this chart, did come down and then now they're coming back up towards the end of end of the year, but that might flatten out even more. Maybe if prices increase really high, we'll see a big dramatic drop. So there you go, Jeremy Knight, the Knight Group. What do you think? I want to hear from you in the comments. Have an awesome day.